If you've ever struggled maintaining connection between your device and something like your C-Star, maybe your ASI Air, then station mode is for you. It's something that offers a huge benefit that I think a lot of people just don't quite understand. And I want to kind of demystify that, show you how a couple things go. My name is Chad. This is the Easy Aster Images channel. We're going to play with some photons today. So you know we're all about making things easy here, which is why we're heavily leaning on the C-Star. This one here might be serving out the rest of its life in Texas. It could be the other one. We're still working on all that. In preparation, of course, we've been playing with both of the C-Stars outside. We've had a beautiful stretch of weather here, and we've got some great videos coming. Big shout out to all of my channel members. If you want to become a member or buy me a coffee now, you can join below. There's also the link to that below in the description and all that kind of fun stuff. So two benefits to station mode. First thing is that what you do is instead of hooking up your device to this and then, you know, it kind of like falling off and disconnecting, or maybe you have to run a network cable like I do with my older uh, ASI Air uh, that I have, like the second generation one. Works fast, works great, but it's one more cable. Station mode actually will put this on your Wi-Fi network and it just becomes a regular device that you can access anywhere, which basically means you can put it anywhere in your yard. You can have your tablet, your device, computer, whatever, and you don't have to ever worry about losing connectivity. Well, I shouldn't really say that because you, it still will drop occasionally and you know, it might be up to your network, how often it might drop so on and so forth, but it instantly rebuilds that communication. There's no turning Wi-Fi on and off and all the annoying stuff that you would do if you're using the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth type of connection. The other thing is it gives you wireless access to the EMMC drives on your C-Star or your ASI Air. So that way you can wirelessly transfer files back and forth. It's a little bit slower in some cases than, you know, hooking directly up and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, as this equipment becomes more integrated and they put less ports into this stuff, the wireless options are going to become more prevalent and we're going to have less opportunities to put USB drives into say an ASI air to pull data off and bring it back to our PC. For example, if I want to leave this out on a pier, then I have to, there's no way for me to, at least that I've met found to plug a drive into this to export files off to it. I have to either take a laptop out there or I have to bring it in here and hook it up but not with station mode. So how do you hook it up? Pretty simple. First of all, you have to do the old school Wi-Fi thing where you connect to it via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, whatever device that you're running. And then simply all you do is just connect on the Wi-Fi here and you go into station mode and you turn it on. And then once you turn it on, all you do is just literally put in your network credentials and then that's it. Reboot everything, put your device back onto like your normal Wi-Fi, So that way you're on the same network now that you just put your C star or your ASI air. And then after that, boom, it's all ready to go. You're going to get like your own IP address for this device and everything else. So that way you can do everything that I said. So now, as you can see, I'm connected via station mode and we've got nothing else to do. We can walk around anywhere with this. We can do anything with any other device and we are all good. So real simple. And now we'll walk you through a couple things I'm working through dealing with two of these, trying to get them to work. Just a little bit of stuff that I filmed and also give you a demo of how you can transmit the files across your network easily. So what you see is we got two of the S50s running out here in various different ways. One is actually on a wedge and a tripod with an anchor battery powering it all night. And another is just on a regular tripod with the ZWO fluid head. And I'm just running that off of a Ryobi power bank and everything works very well. So my Wi-Fi router is right up there as well as my Wisecam so I can kind of keep an eye on everything. 
Now, one of the biggest issues I've found that when you're running two of these at home is that you can only use one iOS device to control each C-Star. I thought you were able to control multiple devices in station mode, but it doesn't seem like you can. Now, the reason why you want to use station mode, of course, is even with like any of your ZWO products, like your ASI Air or anything like that, is that, you know, connecting the Wi-Fi to your phone, iPad, some people, it's kind of like the lottery, they say, you get you might get a really good CSAR or ASI Air that has a very, very great Wi-Fi range. And some of them, it just might plain out suck. Mine are okay, uh, but with station mode, what I can do is connect to that right there. I can put my CSTARs anywhere in my yard, and then I can access them with any of my iOS devices anywhere that I'm at, I'm on the couch, in the bed, whatever. And then I can also access them wirelessly from my PC or from a Mac if I had that as well. And I can do wireless file transfers. So we can modify, delete, do anything that we want to do. So that way it takes another layer of complexity out. So when we're doing images like this, which are gonna be multi-night, we've got stellar polar alignments going on getting 30 second subs out of this one last night, 20 second subs out of this one. You know, when it comes to the actual benefit, time on target is uh, gonna be the best thing. But when it comes to the C stars, even though with a lot of the apps and one shot color processing scripts that are out now, especially in serial, saving the minimum amount of exposures. So anytime you can get rid of exposures, you know, if you're doing 20 seconds versus 30 seconds, that's one less exposure per minute and over eight to 10 hours, that adds up a lot. It's a lot nicer and just easier to have less files to deal with in general. So I've already transferred the files off of this one. So another thing that I found is that you can't actually access both of them via the network drive in Windows. At the same time, I basically have to pull one of them off and then turn the other one off and leave the other one on and then go ahead and pull everything off of that one. And it's another added benefit of doing, say if you're doing multiple, say if you're shooting the same target and you're trying to like knock out one target in a night. So basically I just got 16 hours of the bubble off of these two devices tonight having 20 second exposures on this one and 30 seconds on that one will automatically give me different file names. So that way I could just copy everything into one directory and I'm not gonna get any dumb Windows errors telling me that my files have the same names and all that just in case they overlap, which I've had that happen to me before and I've lost somewhere between like 50 and like 100 frames. I just didn't wanna deal with it and I just hit skip all files. Now for file transferring, it's really, of course, not necessary. You can always just bring the C-Star in and plug it in. You're probably gonna have to recharge it and stuff anyway at some point, but it is pretty handy. For the whole Wi-Fi aspect I talked about, it is super, it's really the only way to go. And if you're not doing it, I don't know why. So what we are, we're on the desktop here and what you're gonna do is just click on your little network tab down here and just type in, backslash backslash C star. And again, you can only have one turned on at a time. I haven't figured out a way around this. I'm sure I will. And the first time you do this, it's going to give you a little bit of a windows error type of thing here. And all I did was add that or take a picture of it and put it into chat GTP. And it told me how to go into windows. It's like a windows thing. I don't know how it does on Mac and turn a couple things on and off. So that way I could access the C star files. And as you can see, they are right here. So C star, C star EMMC images, and we'll go ahead and just double click on that. And there we go. So now we are hooked up to my C star last night. We did the bubble with both of them. And all you have to do is just go ahead and sort out everything that you want. I'm just going to go ahead and select all of my fits files. I'm going to copy those, go into my actual directory where I have all of my C star data. And we just brought in all of these last night from the bubble. You can see that we have the 22nd folder from 
C star beta, and this is from alpha, my first one. And I'm just gonna make another folder called 30 seconds, which if we're gonna use the serial scripts, we're gonna have to change this stuff all around anyway, but this will just help me keep things sorted out. And then if I wanna do multi-night, I could do like 20 second night one, 30 second night two, whatever. And we could just paste all those in there. And as far as transfer times across my network, you know, it's going to move this 1100 files in a couple minutes. Not a big deal. Everything works really fast. So definitely the easiest way to manipulate and play with your C-Star, especially if you want to do something a little bit more permanent like I did. If you're maybe using a peer or something, even though my AVX tripod and stuff is easily to move and it's not a super permanent fixture. It's going to be clear again for multiple, multiple nights. So I'll use either my 3D printed cover to put over top of the C star to protect it, or I'll just leave it go because it is a C star. I, you know, $450 telescope. I know it's a lot of money, but hey, it is what it is. It's not five grand or check in on your imaging session. That's fine. If you have another way of getting files off your devices that you are comfortable with, that's fine too. But this is just another option that I don't see a lot of people talking about and demonstrating all of its actual capabilities. And who knows, maybe we will get additional features in the future. I'm not sure what they would be. But as we know, we didn't have an easy device like this two to three years ago. And now we do. And the future looks bright. So I appreciate each and every one of you. We will talk to you guys later. Peace.